As an expert in frugal living and a financial coach, I have heard some doozies when it comes to financial advice. So today I want to share with you five of the worst pieces of money advice I have ever heard. Hi everybody, thanks so much for watching. If you don't know me, my name is Sarah. I am the owner of FrozenPennies.com. I'm a financial coach and as a family, we are debt free. So there have been some crazy things that I have heard as far as money advice goes. And really, personal finance is personal, right? So you can take these with a grain of salt, maybe learn a little something from it, and understand where I'm coming from. Number one, not paying off your house for tax write-offs. This means holding on to your mortgage just for the tax write-offs. Now, there are some benefits, of course, to tax write-offs and holding on to your mortgage for that reason. However, one of the biggest reasons to pay off your mortgage as quickly as possible is for the financial security and stability that it brings you. Owing somebody money for something as important as your home brings a sense of risk. If something happens, for example, you lose your job, you have no money, health issues take over and you've got medical bills, the idea of losing your home because you can't afford to pay your mortgage, the risk is high. You never know what's going to happen in the future. So do the tax write-offs outweigh the stability and security that you feel if you own your house outright? As long as you keep paying your taxes, nobody can take that away from you. You will forever have a home. Number two, taking on excessive debt. This is a terrible idea across the board, no matter what it's for. In my opinion, taking on any kind of debt is a terrible idea. But taking on excessive debt because, well, the payment's only $120 a month, or this payment is only $140 a month, or this payment is only $350 a month, kind of adds up and snowballs into disaster waiting to happen. Number three, over-reliance on student loans. Let me tell you a little story. When I was going to college, I took out way more than I needed to for student loans. I was considering things like, mm, I wanted enough for books, I wanted enough for living expenses, living expenses. I wanted enough for everything. I wanted to make sure that I took out enough student loans where I could kind of live the high life while I was in college. It sounds crazy. What 19 year old, 18 year old, 22 year old needs to live the high life and borrow money, enough money to go out to dinner and put gas in their car all the time and maybe even buy a new computer. I mean, it sounds a little excessive. High student loan debt will put a damper on what you can afford as an adult. Once you get out of college and have to start paying that money back, that means you delay things like investing for your future, retirement, even home ownership. So many young people can't afford to buy a home because they have such high student loan payments every single month. Number four, buying a new car. This is one of the biggest money mistakes you can possibly make. The minute, the minute you drive that car off the lot, it depreciates. It is not an investment. Investments appreciate over time. The average car payment right now is $750 a month. That blows my mind. $750 a month. Now we bought our house 21 years ago. That is more than we were paying for our mortgage, which I know it was a different time expenses were different, but that's where my mind goes when I think of $750 for the average car payment right now. New cars lose around 20 to 30% of their value in the first year. That's why buying a used car is a much better option. Even if it's just a couple of years old, the amount of money that you spend on something that's almost brand new really does make a difference. And Extended warranties or warranties on a used car do exist. So if you are worried about warranties, 
Many car dealerships have warranties on used vehicles as well. Even better, if you can save up to buy a vehicle in cash, that's your best option. Number five, neglect savings and emergency funds. Now let's first talk about emergency funds. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lot. When we were a young family, we were living paycheck to paycheck, we didn't have an emergency fund. We didn't even know what an emergency fund was. So when something did happen, we actually went without it until we had the money to buy it. That's kind of how we worked things. It wasn't the smartest thing to do, but we didn't borrow money for it. For example, if the washer died or needed to be fixed, then we went without a washer until we were able to buy the part to fix it. Now that we've grown, we're in a new season of life, we have the emergency fund that we never had before. So if anything ever happens, we have the amount of money that we would need to cover it. We also have very strict rules about what an emergency actually means. Does the breaking of the washing machine now still constitute as an emergency? Mm, probably not. We probably don't have to dip into our emergency fund for a new washer. We can probably hold off for a little while and then purchase the parts that we need to fix it or pay a repairman or buy a new washer if we need to. Bankrolling it, paying for it in cash instead of dipping into the emergency fund. The second part of this is neglecting investing in your retirement. Now this is going to be a little bit controversial. I believe that investing in your retirement comes before saving for your children's college education. Now again, this is a little bit controversial. A lot of parents feel that it's their duty to pay for their child's college education. I don't necessarily believe that. Now, student loans, uh, there's, there are ways to go through college and not borrow money. A friend of my son's is actually doing something super smart. <laughs> this kid, I'm so impressed with him. He worked for the first year and saved up as much money as he possibly could and then went to college for, for a year and a half. I think he went for three semesters. Then he ran out of money. So he stopped going to college and worked for another semester and summer, built up his savings, and then went back and did more schooling. So it's going to take him a lot longer to get through college, but he's going to do it without student loan debt. So he's willing to make the sacrifice to stretch it out because he really, truly wants that college degree. Your future as a retired person and having the amount of money that it needs to sustain your life and your bills after you retire is much more important than paying for your child's college education. It really should be their responsibility to take care of that. They should be learning that they need to contribute to that fund, whether it be through scholarships or work study programs or working to save up their money. It's financially responsible to understand how that works. If you're contributing nicely to your 401k or your retirement or your investments and you have the money to help them, then by all means, absolutely do it but your retirement and your savings have to come first. And then taking parent loans out for your child's education? I don't agree with that either. As a frugal living and money management expert, it's very important. I stress education, budgeting, and financial planning. If you're looking for a free budgeting planner, I have one of those. I'm gonna leave a link below in the description and you can sign up and download the free budgeting planner. It's crucial to your financial future to be debt free, to really focus on good financial planning and avoid any type of get rich quick schemes. Give yourself financial stability and pay off debt as quickly as possible and encourage a balanced approach to savings and spending. 
Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I truly appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.